on deck situation we're in. And if you look to the large scale of work ahead of us and, and you think it can't be done, well, let me assure you, frankly and boldly, that together we can do it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, not to ruin the mood, but can someone speak to the rumors that Access spies are targeting local factories for sabotage? I hear there are German prisoners of war working as farmhands at Chesterfield. And a recent radio broadcast noted that nothing is keeping them from bombing the Weldon Springs Ordnance Plant right across the river. I can speak to that. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the recently appointed commander of the Civil Defense Corps, Jocko Brown. Oh. Thank you so much. As Mrs. Karen Brock said, I'm Elmer Bruns, but you can call me Jocko. I would just like to start by saying that civil defense depends upon everyone knowing what to do in an emergency so that confusion and panic can be avoided. New strategies are constantly coming in, so it's necessary to stay alert. To your point, Mrs. Parsons, I can assure you that the Weldon Springs plan is in no danger. Immediately following the tragedy of Pearl Harbor, Mayor Thoreau and the City Council put uh, Uh, of course. Uh, picture this. 
a U.S. cargo ship plows along the Atlantic coast, carrying supplies to our troops, when suddenly, and without warning, an enemy torpedo blasts a hole into the side, incapacitating the wireless systems. Uh, adrift at sea, these men are unable to send an SOS, so they face thirst, hunger, and exposure, but fear not, ladies and gentlemen, they have with them the most powerful weapon of the entire war effort. Behold! Oh, oh hi, it's a bird! <laughs> a bird, Dr. Tainter. It is a pigeon, a homing pigeon trained by the Army Signal Corps. Oh, I see. Oh, let me guess. We're going to defeat the Nazis by ruffling their feathers. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Laugh it up. But while you make a joke of it, remember that pigeons have been used in times of battle since ancient Rome. And now these brave creatures have proven themselves to be feathered heroes. Some have even been given medals for their heroic service. And why not? After all, they brave snipers and hawks trained by the enemy to kill them, all in order to protect us by aiding the allies with critical information. These wonderful creatures can detect the force of Earth's magnetic field as well as the velocity at which the Earth rotates beneath them, allowing them to accurately roost in their final destination. In English, uh, please. Birds like Artemis here uh, can travel up to 2,000 miles at a time uh, with an average speed of 50 miles per hour. Paratroopers can use them in times of radio silence, or, or by bomber squads when they're shot down and need to report their location. Uh, with a success rate of 95%, people are starting to take pigeons seriously as a weapon of warfare. Uh, for instance, the Maiden for Brazier Company has just been tasked with crafting over 28,000 adjustable vests for these brilliant creatures that can be attached to the jackets of paratroopers. So, bird brain indeed. Ha, I say to you, ha, ha. Well, I'll be, if I'd only known during the Civil War, all I needed was a bird and a bra, those rebels would have surrendered in a box. <laughs> a bird and a bra. Well, thank you for that very enlightening presentation. Of course. Oh, oh, oh. I would also like to say, uh, that I, along with my cohorts at the St. Charles County Carrier and Racing Pigeon Association, will be holding a demonstration at Blanchett Park next Sunday. Thank you. Oh, well, speaking of birds of a feather flocking together, <laughs> it is important to remember, in order to swiftly bring forth victory, we all have a part to play. Here to tell us more, representing the local scrap metal drive, is their secretary,
celebration. Ah, heck, she may be too modest to say so, but I ain't. <laughs> Many of you know Mamie's oldest son, Oliver. Well, he's now making us proud, working for the Department of Agriculture in D.C., where they're urging us to set up victory gardens to supplement ration food. Uh, that's right. Vic uh, local air, uh, air raid boards will be going around conducting victory sur uh, garden surveys, asking if people are planning to build, uh, to plant a victory garden, or if you have land to lease for the purpose of vic uh, planting a victory garden. It is necessary that all available plots of land in the city be used. That's right.
proudest moment of my life just occurred recently when I accompanied my grandson, George Stainer III, down to enlist in the U.S. Navy as a hospital apprentice, first class. Now, he's going to be posted aboard the USS Rixie. We went down to St. Louis, and I wore this, my original ensign's uniform. It's a little faded, and it's got a few moth holes, and sure doesn't fit me like it used to. And I've got the picture here to prove it. Here I am, my original photograph. I'd like to show you. I was certainly proud when we went to that recruitment office, and I told that man in the recruitment office, we licked them once, and we'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah. It is that enduring spirit of the people of St. Charles that will help us through these dark times, my friends. By standing together, we dedicate ourselves to the great task remaining before us of providing support from the home front, in the hope that this year, 1942, will bring victory in Europe, victory in Japan, and peace once again to these United States of America. Come down. 